in. So, uh, hi, I am KB with Nerdophiles. Uh, thank you so much for chatting with us. How are you today? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I am doing well, doing well. Okay, let's dive right into Sophie. So, <laughs> Sophie hmm. is a multi-layered character um, that was surprising in a lot of ways. So tell me about the tension between her and her sister Penelope, because I feel like, you know, initially, do you think that her motive was really to set out to ruin Penelope? Or no, is it no, no, more of like not. a gradual thing that happens after she learns more about, you know, Penelope's personal and professional doings? Yeah, so um, so I think it's very interesting that I've got three sisters, so I'm, I was very sort of, I brought a lot of that, um, the way that they, I think Penelope is the person that Sophie cares about the most at the beginning of the show. Because she's lost her mother, she's lost her father, Penelope is basically the only person that she's got in the world. Um, and they do have this very sort of banterous relationship, but at the same time, Sophie is such a proud person, as is Penny, in very different ways, that that brings them head to head because they're each going, experiencing their own things in their own lives that they're not really sharing with each other. I don't think Sophie sets out to ruin her. I don't think that that's something that, I don't think she'd ever admit it, but I think that she feels extremely guilty for effectively ruining Penny's, Penny's life. Um, but I think that the reasons she does it isn't to destroy her sister at all. I think it's more because she feels like her freedom is being curtailed by her sister, which when you add that to their environment, which being a woman in that time, I mean, everything you tried to do was just, suffocated um and I think that 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 tension as well as feeling like she's not understood by her sister is what leads her to do what she does uh, but I think she always loves her yes uh, the love never goes I just feel like you know it's so unfortunate because not only does she kind of ruin Penelope in that way but she ruins a, like the family's legacy and mm -hmm. so, you know, it's just really hard um kind of seeing them struggle through that but I definitely definitely kind of understands the context of like Sophie a little bit more. So I will say that um, Sophie and Dylan go on quite the journey. Um, mm -hmm. And initially, like, you know, you kind of think that Dylan almost corrupts her <laughs> in, a, in a lot of ways. Uh, but later on, you start to see that, like, that's not necessarily the case. Uh, you know, like, Sophie definitely can hold her own um, and she definitely has a lot of opinions and ideas. So can you tell me about like what Sophie learns from Dylan and what she may teach him as well? Yeah, I mean, I think Sophie, when we meet her at the be beginning of the show, really doesn't know that much about the real world. Uh, she's lived her life in a boarding school with basically in marble, in marble mansions. Um, so she learns a whole lot from, from Larry because Suddenly he's someone who's from a different background to most of the people that she's spoken to. Um, he's got, he, he's dealing with, you know, all these working Irish working men who are being underpaid. And I think it's, it's sort of a rude awakening to the fact that the world isn't just, you know, fun and games. It is a dangerous place, especially San Francisco in this time. Um, but I think she also, so there's a, there's a certain emotional maturity that she's forced to learn through spending time with uh, Dylan Leary because, because she's exposed to, to all this suffering. But I think she also teaches him a lot too because she, she's very level-headed um, and as you say, does hold her own despite being much younger than him, despite being a woman in that time, despite all these different things, she she has a heart and is able to see things from a different perspective. Um, maybe not in the middle of the season, but by the end, yes, I think. Okay, okay. And so um, finally, would you, 
touched on it a little bit, but you may change your answer. Um, which character do you believe that Sophie holds allegiance to the most by the end of season two? Because we kind of know in the beginning who it is, but by the end of season two. And um, did you find yourself rooting for another character in particular, um, you know, with season two, just as you were reading the scripts? Yeah, the, the allegiance question's interesting because I sort of feel like this is a show where every character is so well written and so flawed that every character sort of does what they feel like they need to do. So I sort of feel like everyone's their own team. Um, so I don't know if she's ever really got an allegiance with any specific character. Because um, you said at the beginning, you think that she's you know what the answer is for the beginning. Who, who do you think it is? Do you think it's Larry or Penelope? Well, no, no, no. At the beginning, I think it's Penelope. Like, I think that okay. like, when she comes into the fold, her allegiance like really lies with her sister because honestly, it's her safety net and that's all that she knows. But, you know, yeah. she grows a lot over the course of season two. And so, yeah, I was just curious. I mean, to be quite honest with you, I actually think she has an allegiance to no one by the end of season two. So I agree with you, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It, but it's funny because I think that when she sees Leary's violence, I think that's a real watershed moment for her. Um, and it happens quite early on. It happens in episode four when she sees him uh, kill a man. Uh, that really raises alarm bells for her. And that's a like rude awakening that like this is not um, this man is dangerous. Um, she's in love with him, but he is also very dangerous. So. Yeah, I think with both Penny and Leary, she definitely doesn't have any, any allegiance to the mayor or to um, the city of San Francisco or anyone like that. Um, but I think that she, her opinion of both Penny and Leary gets gets corrupted and she realizes that actually all everyone is multifaceted and everyone has their flaws and everyone has their qualities, but no one is no one is perfect, least of all herself. Yes, yes. And so as you were kind of diving into season two, just, you know, as an actress, was there another character that you were really rooting for while you were reading? Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, oh, I, I no forgot problem. to answer that question. Um, yeah, Diane's character, Mai Ling. I think that I, I have so much respect for Mai Ling. And again, a very, very flawed character. Um, and I think it's very rare seeing uh, women who are so uh, powerful, but also are allowed to be flawed um, on screen. I think that that's, that's sort of when we know that we've sort of got equality is when flawed characters are allowed to exist that aren't weak um, as women. Um, and I think Mai Ling has got that 100%. Um, and even though she, um, her means are very questionable, I do kind of, I am kind of on her side. Yes, I feel like everyone's means are questionable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, that's everyone's got blood on their hands. <laughs> yeah, completely. Yes. Well, thank you so much for chatting with Nerdifiles. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. <laughs> Have a great day. All right, you too. Bye. Bye.